A few months ago here on this channel, I did a video about why you should consider fishing for carp, especially fly fishing for carp. Now in many countries throughout the world, carp are considered an esteemed sport fish, as well as most worthy table fare, when caught from clean water, which is why the carp was imported to America in the first place. I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one if you'd like to learn more. But in this video, I'll be going over some of the basics to help you get started with fly fishing for carp, especially big carp. Now this is another one of those videos that's probably going to be much longer than three minutes, but I hope you don't mind. Okay, let's talk about gear for fly fishing for big carp. And again, the key word here is big. We're going after big fish. And that being the case, you want to have some gear that can handle those large, large fish. So for a fly rod, I'm using a eight weight, nine foot Temple Fork Outfitters fly rod. It's uh, plenty long enough to get into those really tight spots. Sometimes these carp just hang in these kind of brushing area, brushy areas along the bank and you really got to do some precision casting sometime uh, to get your fly right on top of them. So a good nine, uh, nine foot rod really lets you get some good long precise casts. As far as uh, line, I'm just using, I think this is just a standard weight forward uh, floating nine or eight weight uh, uh, fly line. For a butt section of my fly line, I'm using a piece of 25 to 30 pounds straight monofilament, nothing fancy. For a tippet or a leader section, uh, next I'll tie on about a three, two and a half, three foot section of eight to 10 pound fluorocarbon. Now that might, that might seem a little bit heavy for fishing these little, little tiny flies that we're using here, but these big carp will rip a fly right off your line like that. So you gotta have something substantial. So again, a piece of uh, eight, uh, eight to 10 pound fluorocarbon, that is for sinking flies. If I'm using topwater flies, I use a piece of eight to 10 pound monofilament. Uh, monofilament is much more buoyant, it'll float, which will help your top water uh, flies float better for a presentation, kind of drifting right to where the fish are. And if you're fishing subsurface, like a little nymph or a San Juan worm or something like that, then I'll use the fluorocarbon because that tends to sink, which uh, works out, again, better for your presentation. So that's a basic overview of your rod and your reel and your line setup. Now let's talk about flies. As far as flies, uh, we'll go much more in depth in probably future videos, but I keep a pretty good, uh, pretty good array of flies. Primarily, I fish uh, things like prince nymphs, San Juan worms. Uh, sometimes these uh, glow bugs uh, really work well. This one here is one I tied up last year during May and uh, June. In much of the Midwest, you get uh, tons of cottonwood seeds on the surface of the water, and these carp love, they just gobble up those cottonwood seeds like crazy. So I tied up kind of a uh, cottonwood seed pattern, but a lot of times it sinks too fast and it's hard to see. So I put on just a little tiny uh, yellow foam kind of popper head, and this is a really strong hook. You gotta use a strong hook for these carp. So that's a little, that's a very effective pattern when the uh, cottonwood seed uh, hatches on, so to speak. So that's a great one there. And uh, we'll go more to detail about that. In rocky areas, carp really like uh, crayfish. So I got some of these little crayfish patterns I tied up and uh, little black leeches work good. But uh, I'll demonstrate some of these as we get into some fish. Now for fly fishing for these big carp, you're also gonna need a big net. Uh, sometimes these fish are in places where it's kind of a steep bank and it's really hard to land. In fact, it's almost impossible to land them to get your hook out and send them on their way. And so I made a, kind of made this myself. It's just kind of a standard fishing net that I shoved inside of a, a tube off of a kayak paddle. That way, if I'm fishing inside of a boat or a canoe or a kayak, I can just use this. And if I'm fishing off a bank like this, I can put this extender piece on and I can really get in there and get them. And uh, as you see here, I've got a good long net for these big fish. It's kind of a small opening here, but when you're fishing by yourself, it's, it's much more manageable. So yeah, that's something I really recommend is having a good landing net for your fly fishing for big carp adventures. 
A few more things, of course the sun can get pretty brutal, so make sure you got a nice you know, hat to keep the sun off your ears and the back of your neck, or just put on some sunscreen. Again, I like to wear these long sleeve uh, sun shirts, keeps the sun off you, keeps the bugs off you, which there's plenty of that when you're fly fishing for carp. Uh, let's see, what else here? Uh, bug spray, there's plenty of ticks in these backwoods, uh, big river bottom swamps and sloughs. So I put on plenty of bug spray, especially around my ankles and my legs and my waist. That's where ticks seem to, you know, get on you. So uh, make sure you use a good uh, DEET-based insect repellent. Uh, for your skin, you can use maybe something non-DEET, but you're going to have lots of ticks and lots of bugs in carp country most likely, so be prepared for that. Also, make sure you have good sturdy footwear. There's a lot of snakes in carp country, so be aware of that as well. Very importantly, don't forget your water when you go carp fishing, especially in uh, warm and extremely hot weather. It's very, very humid in most of these areas where carp live, especially these river bottom swamp areas, and you can get dehydrated very fast and very easily. So bring along plenty of water and keep yourself hydrated. As far as the best times to go fly fishing for carp, uh, here in the Midwest, carp will start to spawn during the months of March into June. And that can vary from year to year depending on the weather, as sometimes it's pretty cold still in March. But typically around May and June, at least here in my home state of Missouri, the carp will start to spawn and get really active. And when they're spawning, you can really get into the big fish. You know, they're easy to see, they're very active, and that can be a great time to start your fly fishing uh, for carp adventures. But the great thing about carp is that you can really fish for them year round. And you can also fish for them at any time of day. You know, early in the morning, the fish can be quite active. Uh, late morning, throughout the afternoon, when the sun is up quite a bit higher, you get much better uh, light penetration into the water and it can, it can be much easier to see, which makes it ideal for fly fishing. And the fish, a lot of times, are still feeding late morning, midday. That's a great time. And in the evening, of course, the carp tend to get really active. In fact, you'll even see them sometimes jumping out of the water like a bass feeding on, you know, bugs and flies and things. So you can fish for these carp year round all day long which again makes them just a fantastic fish uh, to go for especially with the fly rod so keep that in mind most carp live in muddy or at least highly stained water so it can be very difficult to actually see the fish that you're trying to pursue now sometimes in kind of backwater areas where you haven't had much rain for a long time if the water is real shallow and there's not been a whole lot of activity stirring up the silt in the mud sometimes you can see the entire fish very very clearly but in most situations you're just looking for signs of the carp's presence and not so much just the entire fish as you would maybe fishing for trout or other fish that live in very clear water situations so there's a number of things to look for uh, telltale signs of a carp's presence the first thing you can look for is signs of feeding activity. Uh, contrary to popular belief, the carp isn't strictly a bottom feeder. Uh, they obviously spend a lot of time on the bottom, but the carp will feed at all different levels of the water column, on the bottom, in the middle, and even on the top. And so it's good to have flies that will uh, address all of those situations. And again, we'll, I'll go more into detail about uh, fly selection in future videos. But uh, for example, when a, when a carp is feeding, if they're feeding on the top, a lot of times you'll just see their mouth, you know, on the surface of the water feeding, or you'll see them right below the surface of the water, and you'll see, you know, rings from where they're feeding. Quite often they hang right on the edge of the bank, you know, nestled, in the, uh, nestled inside the thick brush where they're feeding on uh, aquatic worms and insects that are in the, you know, the vegetation on the side of the body of water. If it's a grass carp, a lot of times they're feeding on the vegetation itself. So if you move very, very slowly and quietly and just kind of look along the edges, you'll see just kind of some concentric rings coming out of a, a patch of brush right on the side of the water. That's a telltale sign of a carp being present. Other times you'll see uh, just their tail coming out of the water if they're feeding on something on the bottom in shallow water. Sometimes you'll see their dorsal fin as they're cruising along. Uh, quite often you'll see just a dark shadow like a big submarine moving through. Those are all things to look for. Sometimes just a flash of like a golden color coming off their scales in the sunlight. If they're feeding on the bottom, quite often you'll see kind of a cloud of mud dispersing where they're rooting around. So that's another sign of a carp being present. 
So those are all obvious signs that a carp is feeding, or at least a carp is present, and you can get a shot at getting them with your fly rod. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, when it comes to fly fishing for carp, you really have to be quiet, you have to go slow, you have to be stealthy, you have to be mindful of your shadow, of your casting, of even your footfalls. I like to imagine a great blue heron. That's sort of the model of how you should be when you're fly fishing for carp, and really any kind of fish for that matter. You know, if, you, if you've ever watched a great blue heron in action, they just tiptoe along very, very quietly, very, very slowly. They'll stand still sometimes for minutes at a time, waiting for the fish to come into their area. Again, with these carp, they spook very, very easily. So you can't make any noise. You, can't, you really gotta watch your casting. If you cast any shadows over the fish, whoosh, gone. Too heavy of a footfall, gone. They're very, very spooky, which again, makes them so much fun and so challenging to fish for. Uh, so those are all some ideas for actually spotting the fish and how to approach them. Another tip for you, if you're trying to fish, you know, super calm, super still water like this, if you try to cast right on top of that fish or within an inch or two of where he is, he's most likely going to take off, even with a real delicate presentation. And so in a situation like that, I try to cast, you know, several feet away from the fish and then slowly mend my line with my fly kind of right back in front of him or, or where he's heading. So uh, be careful of your casting as well. All right, there's a pretty sizable grass carp out in front of me, about, oh, 30 yards or so. Probably can't see it from here, but he's a pretty big one. And he's slowly working his way a little closer here. So we're gonna see if we can get him. Stand by. Okay, he is primarily feeding on the surface, so I switched up flies. I'm going with the cottonwood seed fly. So it's like that, just a a little yellow popper head with some white uh, white feathers there. On fish on, fish on. All right, they're really finicky today, but finally got one to take a whack at that uh, cottonwood seed fly. He's not the great big one I was after, but let's see what he got. We'll see what we got here. Okay, not the biggest grass carp in the world, but uh, there's plenty more in there and they get way bigger than that, so. All right, grass carp on the cottonwood seed fly. All right, as you saw, there was quite a few small grass carp around today. Not a whole lot of real big ones that I was able to come across and didn't really see any uh, common carp activity at all, which is really what I'm after. So uh, I'm gonna try a different spot here in a few days and we'll see what happens then. So I moved on to another location. There's a lot of big, uh, looks like common carp in this particular little hole. So uh, we'll see if we can pick one off. They don't seem to be actively feeding here. So we'll see if we can get one interested with a, oh, there's one over there. Hold on, stand by. All right, fish on, fish on, whoo, <laughs> sweet, whoa. All right, yeah, he hit the, uh, whoa, there he goes, holy crap, smokes. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, put that uh, Prince Nymph right in front of his face. Yeah, I think it's a big common carp. And uh, he hammered it. All right, he's still out there just bulldozing in that, uh, this area in front of me. Man, there's just, this guy is just a horse. Golly, he's just, I might be able to land him right here in front of me if I wear him out enough here, but man, this is a good one. Golly. Man, these fish are strong. Whew. And that's why I use an eight weight rod on these big carp instead of these little, you know, five and six weights. You get a big fish like this, you need some backbone to bring them in. Because they are powerful. Whoa. I mean, powerful. Yeah, no, he's pretty good. He is pretty good. He's not the 30 pounder, but uh, they are getting bigger and bigger as the day progresses for sure. Okay, come on in here, carp. Come on, I'm gonna fall in the water. Whoa, Ooh, yeah, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. There's a nice carp. Nice common carp on the fly rod. Beautiful fish. Not sure how much he weighs. 
Again, they get a lot bigger than that, but they're uh, getting progressively bigger as the day goes on. Awesome. We'll keep at it right on. Well, there you have it, my friends. That's an overview of the wonderful world of fly fishing for carp. I'll be making many more carp fishing videos in the future, so stay tuned. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to this channel and check out the 3 Minutes Outdoors website at 3minutesoutdoors.com. And finally, if you'd like to support this channel, click on the link in the video description below to find out more.